What's going on, Vapor fans? Today, I want to talk to you about an RTA by Mars Team called the Muramasa. Now, for some of you guys, you might remember exactly what Mars Team was, and they were uh, a company who, who developed a sub tank, a small little sub tank called the Yokozuna. Okay, and this is their follow-up item called the Muramasa. So. Uh, bear with me on this one, okay, because I've noticed that one thing about this company is that they like to use very, very big names for the small items that they are creating, okay, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it because they still have to meet certain regulations in Europe, and that requires them to just be two mil tanks. So it was two mils on the sub tank, and it's going to be two mils on the Muramasa as well. So let's dive down, take a closer look at this thing, and see if it lives up to all the hype. Now we're in the power mode here. Alright children, so before we begin, as always, let's take a look at the screen cap over here. So let's go over to MarsTeam.com and take a look at this guy. This is their new product of the Muramasa, okay? Now, I have to tell you that this uh, photo does not do it any justice whatsoever. It, it, it doesn't make any sense, okay? It looks like it's glass over here. It's not these things, uh, the way that it's shaped or whatever, it's not. And what's strange about it is that uh, it looks more like the one on the left over here. And it doesn't look so much like this one, okay? And in fact, uh, they show you the actual photo over here, which is exactly what it looks like. The same thing with the drawing, where it kind of goes straight down. It doesn't do this kind of like skirt wide belly type of deal. I haven't seen it able to do this, uh, not with the version that was sent to me. But uh, looking at all the actual parts, it matches what I got. But when I see like these 3D renderings or whatever, it looks nothing like the actual thing. So that kind of bothers me. Get it together, Mars team. Okay. So as far as you guys wondering where you can pick this thing up, uh, it is out of stock at 3F Vape. Okay. But it was going for $18.99 over there. So does that mean it was sell selling very well and it's doing very good? I don't know. No, or maybe they're just um, a very small company and, and they, they ran a stock very easily. I, I, I really couldn't tell you. So... Um, I personally haven't been uh, really monitoring the sales of this thing uh, as much, but yeah, it does go for eighteen ninety nine. I I suppose that's the uh, going price for it. Yeah, so definitely you know under twenty bucks for original item, I'd give it a try. Okay, so now we're over to the dive cam over here, and this is our Muramasa tank atomizer. Okay, I uh, want to show you guys that there's pretty much no instructions whatsoever. It's just this diagram of stuff that you get. Okay, and that's about it. The rest of it you kind of have to figure it out so thank goodness for this video and other reviewers um, I'm gonna set this cap over here on the side and then show you what's going on with this thing and how it differs from other items okay uh, it's basically a lot of uh, little design differences that doesn't make too much difference to the the uh, um, performance of things okay so what we're seeing over here is the stainless steel cap okay now this cap is not just a stainless steel cap but it also doubles as the uh, adapter for the 510 drip tip okay so now it comes with a 510 drip tip but it's by no means a chuff tip or anything it's just regular 510 and then you could go ahead and put any of your own drip tips in there okay so what's different is that it's it's kind of uh, reversed okay so when you take this off there's still a cap over here okay now this is a plastic cap and it comes with a chuff tip like so and then you put this on that okay and then you just uh yeah wouldn't use this cap anymore if you want to go around chuffing so that's kind of different but it no by no means like you know um changes the performance of anything uh, wouldn't compare it to like say like a twisted messes rda where like you know you could do chuff tap cap or you could you know put on an add a, uh, an adapter so that like you could use a 510 there's plenty and plenty of you know different atomizers that could do that this is just like a different way of doing it so um although it stands out to me i still gotta admit functionality uh no change okay so Along with the packet, it comes with a couple of O-rings and uh, no screws or anything like that. So, kind of a bummer. Just extra O-rings. Hmm. 
maybe they could have did something else with the packaging so it could come with more but i'm gonna go ahead and then leave a couple of these things aside and then show you more of what's going on over here so as far as the cap over here okay this could just you know tug off okay so you could see what's going on over here because this is just held on by the o-ring so we pull that off now uh after pulling this off we see that uh there is a gold deck inside and this deck the post looks very very much like the vision rda okay it's kind of sort of velocity style but then you have to share the terminals with both sides okay and personally i'm just not a fan of that okay i like the idea of each lead having its own terminal whether you're using a full um, two hole velocity pole system or you're using a power block system very much like the uh, twisted messes rda okay um, when you have two leads that has to share the same terminal this thing has to be tightened down so much harder because it needs to mash it needs to mash everything that's in there in order to get a very tight connection for both sides that way the moment that you dry fire when you're trying to light up the coils the coils will glow evenly if the uh, the connection to one of the, the the legs or whatever is a little bit loose and the other ones are tight then then the ones that are tight will glow faster than the ones that are loose and that will give you a very imbalanced vape not only an imbalanced vape but it will give you an off reading on your ohms because um this one will be reading a little bit higher and this one will be reading a little lower and it's it's just strange and it's 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 just not a good thing to do okay so i'm gonna go ahead and uh release this over here and then show you something very interesting this is the deck inside okay i like the idea that you could release the deck so that like you know it's easy to clean you can see what's going on if there's any extra gunk in it or anything like that okay and then as far as uh you know once you, you get things installed and you can hold it like this you can get like nice clean sh uh, cuts and shaves and stuff so it comes with this delrin piece at the bottom right and this delrin piece i assume is going to allow you to go for single coil type of setups as opposed to the dual coil left and right however when you look at the orientation of these holes how are you supposed to do that there's only one answer for this it means that they're trying to tell you to use the top of the uh screws over here to build a floating coil in this direction and then one connects this way the other one uh the other lead connects this way okay um that is a very very ancient archaic you know off the wall back to back back to the future like k fun type of setup uh the omega rda was also like that okay uh we don't do that anymore right uh why did we do stuff like this in in, in the old days because we used to use things like eco wool and then we would take uh i don't know like how, how could i explain it like let's say this was a piece of eco wool and then we would wrap some wire around it right and then we would install it in and then wick up the eco wool and then we're ready to go okay we built the coil around the wick now we build the co uh, the coil and then we stuff in the wick okay completely different pattern that that's going on so another thing that i don't like is that like had you went ahead and did something like this you would intentionally have to try your best to level the coil as low as possible without creating any shorts or anything like that okay and the reason is because shorter wicks wick better okay um granted that this thing is kind of like a genesis style post atomizer you know you have the tank at the bottom you could tilt you could get it to wick and stuff however again shorter wicks wick better because of the capillary action over here okay if you can shorten the wicks as much as possible you should absolutely absolutely do so so i'm gonna go ahead and remove this little guy because we will be doing a build on this and uh i'm not gonna rock this in single coil so uh we're gonna do a dually on this okay uh another thing that was very strange is the adjustable pin over here to the pin over here okay so what happens is that instead of this little guy being adjusted proper height so that it always makes a nice connection over here right uh you could go ahead and shove a screwdriver in here and then adjust the height level of this thing um few things okay number one i understand changing this a little bit to make a better connection but i personally think that this should have been like you know the depth all cnc calculated 
okay? Because if we adjust this thing, like, you know, ridiculously, right, and then we have it come out a lot, then what happens is that once this thing sits inside, the height level of the deck would raise. You see what I'm saying? But when the height level of the deck raises, it, it poses no advantage or disadvantage at all to, to uh, the setup. In fact, when you put this cap on over here, and now you have the deck raised further into the center of this thing, you know, it, it, it doesn't even make sense. Because, uh, number one, the way that this thing is shaped, it's capped out. You see what I'm saying? And if we forced it higher anymore, then it would just be touching the plastic. The coils would be touching the plastic. That doesn't really make any sense either. So, so yeah, not too happy about the design of that. Um, let's take this back out and uh, put it in over here so that you can see what's going on. Okay. Now, at the bottom of the 510, another 510 uh, pretty much looks the same. I like the fact that this is locked down all the way and it's already protruding. That makes this uh, connection very safe, okay? And you could extend it even further should you want to put this device on top of like some kind of a hybrid mech mod or something like that. Should you want to, but uh, that is a more advanced vapor kind of thing to do. So please, user discretion is advised. Okay, so now we have the deck of the Muramasa sitting on our building tray over here. I'm going to go ahead and just use 22 gauge canthal over here, okay? Just a simple, silly, round build, okay? Uh, I see no reason to get super fancy on this. It's just a small, simple RTA with a top deck that's very, very close to the 510 connection. So I'm going to do this very quickly, and then we'll get a vape on it, and then I'll give you my final thoughts. So I went ahead and wrapped up two 22 gauge canthal wires eight wraps each and we're gonna install this in and get this done okay this is exactly what I mean by sharing terminals okay I hate all RDAs that share terminals I hate all RTAs that share terminals it makes building so much more difficult okay whatever the design is I, I never understand why they can't just build individual terminals for each one now my coils are all nice and warped hot mess going to try to fix it up a little bit try to lift both these up a little bit and out of the way okay and now we're going to do our best to try to get these cut all right now because i personally want it as flush as possible so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to tighten this screw as much as i can okay this is exactly what i meant earlier okay when you share connections into the same terminal then you're going to have to put massive amounts of torque on this so what happens is that now you gotta pray that you know it's good screws it's a good connection and it could um, it could hold and it's not going to snap on you right now I'm so I'm so worried ah there we go okay so now all these are nice and tight then I could go ahead and maybe take a plier right and then spin it like this because I demand perfection <laughs> there we go and then this thing comes off so I'm gonna do this for all four legs okay now keep in mind that when you do this when you do this okay uh, the it will back out a little bit so you gotta tighten it again okay as you're doing this See, I gotta tighten again, and then come back. It's ri ridiculous, right? Look how much torque I'm putting on these screws. There we go. Now all four are off, and nice and clean. Because, because of the way that this thing is set up, I can't get my uh, flush cutters in on this. So I have no choice but to use this old school, you know, bend in the leg method. And also keep in mind that the thicker gauge that you use, the harder it is to do this. All right, so let's put our screwdriver back in and uh, help realign the coil to where we would like it to be. Okay. 
Okay. And then we're going to dry fire this up while pinching it with a ceramic tweezer to get this nice and perfect. So let's take a look at that. So as always, I have my trusty SDNA 200 here. And uh, let's put this on. Okay. And I'm um, set at 65 watts at the moment. So let's give this thing a little test fire. Okay. And we're going to work out the hot spots. Ah, there we go. So, a little pinch here, a little pinch there. Okay. Slowly pulse on through. Remember, when you're using regulated devices, pulse slowly. You know, I've, I've, uh, I mean, even I've made this mistake before, where like I pulsed very quickly, and either I locked the device or I just turned it off. So guys, remember, as you're uh, pulsing on through with a regulated device, go slow, okay? Because if you uh, go too quickly, you, you might just turn off your device or, or lock it up or something. There you go, guys. Muramasa. Okay, so here we are again on the building tray, and for those of you who are wondering, did I leave this on the side to let it cool down? Yes, absolutely I did, okay, after dry firing it, give it a little time for it to cool down before you go ahead and wick it. So, here we go, pull this one through, okay, and then cut this off over here. Then, let's pull this over here the other side and I'm not gonna bother cutting this one so what I want to do is that I want to show you guys what is wrong with the design of this thing okay it's the way that the coils over here are installed it's again you know shapes orientation 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 is what makes a device good or bad can I show, can show you guys over here see the connection I have to connect it like this no matter it's a round build or a uh, Clapton build or whatever it is right but you can see that the lead is in the way you know that's not good that's definitely not good okay so I guess I mean I could always take a needle nose plier and try to shape this thing a little bit right but I shouldn't have to this should have been caught by the engineer of like you know the way that you install things this is definitely going to get in the way of stuff okay so let me take this off let me show you how to wick this thing up properly so we want to remove the base and just work with the top okay so the first thing that we do is prime up the cotton a little bit Starting from the coils, paint your coils. Okay. And then come out a little bit. Doesn't have to be a lot, just a little bit. Okay, don't go all the way to the ends because most of it you guys already have a feeling we're going to be cutting it off. So. So I do like this, you know, I do like the whole completely remove the deck and uh, now you can work with it freely in your fingers okay I'm gonna put my juice aside now we take a flathead screwdriver okay and then we begin to tuck okay I think you guys already know that after we tuck I'm gonna chop everything off so I've noticed that if you want to do it really clean, you should uh, tuck and cut at the same time. You know, instead of like tucking all four and then coming back to cutting it, then sometimes it's a little, it's a little bit of a mess. Okay, so now all of the leads, all of the uh, the wicks are nicely trimmed to the length that I need to sit into the juice rails over here if you will juice channel whatever you want to call it there we go alrighty okay. so 
what I'm going to do is that take the bottom base and we're going to screw this back together but before I do I gotta make sure that uh, this little guy here has a reasonable connection I've noticed that because what happens is that if you uh, you should check maybe maybe all of them are like machine just uh, slightly off but mine I have to release it a little bit give it just a little bit of height or later on it's not going to fire at all okay so I'm gonna do this come back to my SDNA again and uh, screw this on okay and let's give it a little bit of test fire 65 watts here we go oh yeah nice so from this point <clears throat> Okay, guys, so from this point is exactly where I have my problem. Granted, it is kind of sort of top fill, but can you see what I have to work with? So what do I have to do? You guessed it. It is syringe time. So I'm going to have to go ahead and put my syringe over here. Look at this. It doesn't even really have that much room for the syringe. See this? I can't even stab this through. But what I can do is share the space a little bit with where the wick is and then I could go ahead and inject my juice okay so yeah not crazy about that all right and uh, as I said earlier this thing is only a two mil capacity to be compliant with uh, European regulations so it is what it is guys okay let's give this thing another test fire all right and let's put the uh, top cap back on like so okay be sure to align the uh, the airflow with your coils okay and uh, let's take it back up to the top cam all right guys so here we are with the uh, Muramasa sitting on the SDNA 200 and uh, I'm got this at 65 watts right so let's go ahead and give it a couple of hits Pretty good vapor for a simple round build, wouldn't you say? I like this thing, however, the, there's one slight catch to it, okay? Now, when I'm using it in all plastic and the chuff cap mode, okay, then it's bearable. We could go on, chain this thing, and it's not going to be that much of a problem. However, the moment that I take this off, and then let's decide to go uh, stainless steel mode, which is, I remove the chuff cap over here, and then we put the um, the, the stainless steel one on, okay? Uh, number one, the first pain in this thing is that, like, when you go with the chuff mode, it kind of sort of makes sense that you cannot adjust the airflow on this thing. Now, you can adjust the air airflow when you're on this, because now you have the double cycloptic on top of each other, okay? So you have to line that up. But the thing is that, like, uh, the stainless cap retains so much heat that the plastic Delrin drip tip is unbearable. So what happens is that right now... Excellent vapor, excellent flavor. I like it very much, but there's no way I could chain this thing. So Mars Team, really look into... Um, heat dissipation on stuff like this okay something of a rta built at 65 watts i should be able to you know go on and on for like the whole tank without a problem hold it to my face and it's not going to be too hot right now it's already getting really warm So I've been using this thing for about a week now, and every single time I get to chaining about like maybe between uh, six or eight hits, then I really have to put it down, set it on the side, and let it cool down.
So, what are my final thoughts on this little Muramasa? Yeah, uh, for under 20 bucks, give it a go. Not bad. Not bad. Not too shabby, okay? Uh, certain things should be worked on or whatever, but if you're looking to collect something new, something interesting, right? Uh, this little guy, only 2 mil capacity, so keep that in mind. Not exactly something that you want to uh, take to work with you, but, you know, running small errands or something like that, yeah, 2 mil should be okay, I guess. So... As always, guys, uh, that is my review for the Muramasa by Mars team. As we always say here on PVA, question everything, do your homework, vape clever. Take care, guys.